how to use G-Power to plan the sample size for moderated mediation with Haze process macro. If you want to test a moderated mediation, for instance model 7, model 8, model 14 or model 15, with process for SPSS or for R, then you will want to plan the necessary sample size. However, there are not that many really good tools for performing the necessary power analysis. Hi, my name is Arndt Rigosh, I'm a statistical consultant, and in this video I show you how to calculate a rough estimate of the necessary sample size for your moderated mediation model. When we are talking about statistical power, the crucial question is, for what specific effect do we want to perform a power analysis? In a moderated mediation, the key measure is the index of moderated mediation. The index of moderated mediation is the product of the regression weight for the interaction of the one path and the regression weight for the other path of the mediation. If this index is significant, you have a moderated mediation. If this index is not significant, you don't have a moderated mediation. With GPower, you can calculate the exact power for this index of moderated mediation. But what you can do is this. You can perform a power calculation for both components of this index. That is, the interaction for the one path and the normal regression weight for the second path. And you can calculate how large a sample do you need for the combination of both those effects to be significant. First, you have to identify the regression models that go into the process model you want to test. Let's assume you want to run process model 7. This is the conceptual diagram. For the power analysis, we need the statistical diagram, this one here. For the moderation, we have the independent variable, the moderator and the interaction predicting the mediator. This model is simply the combination of two multiple regressions. A multiple regression predicting the mediator and a multiple regression predicting the dependent variable. And for multiple regression, we can easily perform power calculations using G-Power. But it is a little bit more complicated because here we are not interested in the power for the interaction or the power for the B-Path, but the power for finding significant results for both those effects at the same time. In order to perform any power analysis, you need an assumption about the size of the effect you want to be able to find. In this case, you need two assumptions. One assumption about the interaction for the A path, how large do you expect this interaction to be, and a second assumption for the B path. Ideally, you can base your calculations on effect sizes found in the literature. Otherwise, you will simply have to make assumptions about those two effects. G-Power for regression works with Cohen's F squared as an effect size measure. 0.35 would be a large effect, 0.15 would be a medium effect, and 0.02 would be a small effect, according to Cohen. But of course you can assume effect sizes in between those numbers. In this tutorial, we look at three different cases. The first case, both effects are extremely different from each other. The second case, both effects are only somewhat different from each other. And the third case, both effects have the same size. So let's start with extremely different effect sizes. Let's assume we expect a medium-sized B path, but only a small effect for the interaction for the A path. In our calculation, we always start with a smaller effect of the two, because that's the bottleneck when it comes to power and sample size. So we start with calculating the necessary sample size, in this case for the interaction for the A path. This is G-Power. If you haven't used it yet, you'll find a link to the free software in the video description. Statistical test, linear multiple regression, single regression coefficient. Type of power analysis a priori. I would use two tails. Here the effect size, in this case a small effect. The alpha error, the power. In this tutorial I use 0.80, but of course you could use 0.95 as well. And the number of predictors. Here we have three predictors in the multiple regression predicting the mediator. For that reason we have to put in here three. If you have additional covariates, you will have to add their number to this number. If we calculate the power, we get a total sample size of 395. This is the sample size we need to find a small effect for the interaction of the A path. But that's not exactly what we want to accomplish. We want to have a power of 0.80 to find a significant effect for the interaction of the A path and for the B path. So the next step is checking how large the power would be for the B path with a sample size of 395. For that, we perform a post hoc power analysis. I change this parameter here. The effect size is the effect size we assume for the B path, in this example 0.15. Here the sample size and number of predictors are two the mediator and the independent variable. 
and here we can see we get a power of 1 for the B path, assuming that both effects are statistically independent from each other, that is, the interaction for the A path and the B path, now we can calculate the overall power by multiplying the power of both components. Power for the interaction was 0.80, power for the B path was 1, the product is 0.80. Thus, with a sample size of 395, we get a power of 0.80 for both components of the moderated mediation to be significant at the same time. We can see that with very different effect sizes, only the smaller effect size matters for the power calculation. But that is not the case if the difference between the two effect sizes isn't as large as here. Only moderately different effect sizes will be the next case we'll be looking at. Before we go there, if later on you need help with your moderated mediation with process, I provide video consultations for researchers and students around the globe. You can find a link to my consulting services in the video description. Now to somewhat different effect sizes. Let's assume, again for the B path, a medium-sized effect, but in this case for the interaction for the A path, an effect that is halfway between small and medium, let's say 0.085. Again, for our calculation, we start with a smaller effect. Here's the calculation of the necessary sample size to find an effect of 0.085. Again, three predictors, the model for the interaction of the A path, and we need a sample size of 95. Then again, checking the power for the second effect, in this case for the B path, with a post hoc power analysis. The effect size for the B path was 0.15. Two predictors in the model for the B path, and here we get a power of 0.962. The overall power for finding significant results for both effects is 0.80 multiplied with 0.962, that is 0.7696. That's too small, that's smaller than 0.80, and we wanted a power of 0.80. Now we have to increase the power we use in the power analysis for the interaction, so there's still something left for the B path. Here the power for the B path is about 0.04 smaller than 1, and now I would increase the power for the interaction of the A path a little bit less than that. So here I would try out a power for the A path of 0.83 instead of 0.80. The rest stays the same. The effect size for the interaction of the A path, the number of predictors, and with that we get a sample size of 102. Then again post hoc power analysis for the B path, the effect size for the B path, the sample size of 102 and the two predictors for the B path, we get a power of 0.972 for the B path, and assuming independence of both effects, the overall power is 0.83 multiplied with 0.972, that is 0.807. Thus here we need 102 cases in order to get a power of at least 0.80 to find both significant effects. Then the third case, both effect sizes are equal, Let's say we assume that for both effects, for the interaction of the A path and for the B path, we have an effect that is halfway between small and medium, so let's say 0.085. With equal effect sizes, the calculation gets easier, because now we can simply assign the power of the square root of 0.80 to both effects, because square root of 0.80 multiplied with square root of 0.80 gives 0.80. The square root of 0.80 is 0.8944, the rest is the same, our effect size, the three predictors, resulting in a sample size of 124. And if we do the same thing with two predictors for the B path, again we get a sample size of 124. If both effects are statistically independent, the overall power is the power for the first part, 0.8944, multiplied with the power for the second part, 0.8944 equals 0.80. So we need 124 participants to achieve a power of 0.80 in this model. Up to now I've shown you how to perform this analysis for process model 7, but the same logic applies for the other models as well, models 8, 14 or 15. The only difference is the number of predictors. And of course that for models 14 and 15 it's about the interaction of the B path multiplied with the A path. How many predictors do you need for those other models? In model number 8 we have three predictors for the A path and four predictors for the B path. In model 14 we have one predictor for the A path and four predictors for the B path. And in model 15 we have one predictor for the A path and five predictors for the B path. The rest is the same. And if you have covariates, you have to add the number of covariates to those numbers. 
There are some limitations to this approach you should know, because there are two somewhat simplifying assumptions that go into this calculation. First, that the power for the index of moderated mediation is equivalent to the power of finding significant results for both components of the index of moderated mediation. That isn't exactly true. With process the index is calculated using bootstrapping and it is possible that the index is significant even though one of the components is not significant. And the opposite is possible too. You could have both components to be significant but the index is not significant. However, I believe those cases are quite rare. The second assumption, that both parts, in model 7 the interaction for the A path and the B path, are statistically independent, because only then we can calculate the overall power by multiplying the power of both components. But I think in many cases it's a reasonable assumption to make. For those reasons, the results are only an approximation of the needed sample size. It can be a good idea to add some margin of safety to the results. So I would recommend at adding at least, let's say, 10% to the results in order to deal with the fact that there are assumptions in this calculation that not always hold exactly. If you want to report this way of calculating the necessary sample size later on in the method section of your paper or your thesis, I've written a possible way of explaining how this power calculation was performed. You can find this example text in the written version of this tutorial. The link is in the video description. And if you run a moderated mediation, later on you will want to report the results in your results section. I've made a separate video about how to report the results of a moderated mediation. Maybe that tutorial can be helpful for you later on. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.